Hey, no, no. To, to again to, to get back to your question, I really you know never even thought about it. But then when I started working with some of these people that that I grew, you know, I used to watch uh, Don Wilson as a fighter, and then seeing some of his early films and Seagal and Richard Grieco way back when, you know, on TV and stuff. It was such a high for me. It still is. I'm still, half the time, like when I, I just did a film with Armand Asante. My God, that guy was incredible. I really, sometimes it, it's hard for me to, to, to stay, you know, calm and cool be this director when it's like, wow, you're a big fan of this stuff. I can imagine that, definitely. Because, as I said, Armand Asante, his latest films, they should be giving a rebirth to his career, and I hope they, they do. Yeah, that, that guy is just an incredible, mm-hmm. incredible talent. And James Russo, my God, you know. I, I did the first one, I think, was Redemption. I did a film called uh, Redemption with Don Wilson and Chris Penn. And, and Russo, and, macho, macho, come here, come here. Here's what I see. And blah, blah. We, we, he was such a collaborative actor and very intense. And just yeah, what I love about awesome. Jim is that I gave him a call about two years ago. He was possibly going to do an interview with the site, and he agreed to it. But my own laziness led to that not happening. But... Uh, I was talking to Jim, and after we got the formalities out of the way, I'm like, yeah, I definitely want to do the interview. Just I want to grab a couple of your old films that we'll talk about, like, and I named one film, and Jim just goes, oh, that film's a piece of shit. <laughs> and just a, I, he is a tremendous actor, too. Like, just watching him, he did a film in the 80s called Extremities, where he was a, uh, a rapist. Uh, I think it was Goldie Hawn, maybe, but I'm probably wrong on that one. And it was, yeah, Farrah Fawcett, yeah, that's it. And that was a one hell of a performance yeah. from Jim. Oh, yeah. He's an intense actor, and, and he really, you know, I, you know, all these guys have been very blessed. Even this other actor, you know, again, old-timer, John Savage, who just, you know, incredible, incredible actors. And and that's the thing, man. That's the thing that's, that I've been very blessed is that, Whenever, you know, most of these films, uh, you know, you, you, my biggest criticism on any film is, is making sure, you know, that, that they tell the stories. When I'm watching, even right now as we're talking, I have the, I'm watching half past Dead too, and just seeing the shots and seeing the edits and stuff. I'm very self-critical of my stuff, so it takes me a while, it takes me about a year to like my movies, <laughs> you know. But when I see performances, bad performances, man, does that hurt me. And that's why when, whenever we do these films, I try to get, you know, you try. You, you hope and, and, and pray that you try to get the best actors for the role so you're not having to teach them how to act. Because I've, I've been in those situations where some of the lesser parts have gone to some actors that aren't as strong, and you're like, oh, my God, pulling teeth. Pulling teeth. You know, I recently worked with Flavor Flav, and this guy, he, he wasn't an actor, but what he did, which I thought was incredible, is that he... Um, he was always trying to, you know, learn his lines and stuff like that. So when, when you see the scenes when he's not saying his lines, he's actually so into it because he's actually listening. <laughs> you know, you see his eyes, you see his movement, you see. So, so you. So his and on what movie did you work with Flav of Flav? Because I got to look out for that one. He, we just, it's gonna, it should be out hopefully later this oh, year. Oh, okay. Of a fit fighter. And that one was, uh, we had, that's the one where we had Armand, we had Flav of Flav, we, uh, you know, John Savage, <laughs> and, uh, and you know, we got uh, this, this um, ultimate fighter who's actually fighting next week, uh, Rampage, in there. And, uh, and Flay, like I told you, he took it as a challenge because he's never done any acting, you know, apart from his videos and stuff like that. And, uh, and, and so we put him in there, and, and the guy good presence, you know, good presence. Like I told you, it was hard for him because, uh, you know, learning all his dialogue and stuff like that. So that was the biggest challenge there. But when he's listening, that's the hardest thing to do, just listen and not do anything. You know, a lot of people when they're acting, they're always trying to do something, trying to, you know, occupy their time while somebody else is talking. But this guy was actually listening for his cue, <laughs> but it comes across so intense. You know, it can- And why has Confessions of a Pit Fighter taken so long to get out there? Because when I picked up that, um, that film Pit Fighter, which was directed by uh, Jesse Johnson, yeah. I thought it was your movie. And I was yeah, I was yeah. pissed. <laughs> oh yeah, no. Oh, no. Well, what happened? Uh, <laughs> no, no. Well, what happened is is uh, when when we did Confessions, we shot it, and then there was a lot of problems in the post production process of it, you know. And then we had to re-edit out scenes because there was rights issues because we had uh, we had some uh, some songs in there that uh, that somebody didn't uh, do you know, enough due diligence, unfortunately. 
and so we had to re-edit it after it was edited, and then uh, then we had some post sound issues. It was it was really a challenging experience because uh, you know sometimes you do that. Sometimes you take chances, and I've always taken chances on on companies and people. And uh, eighty ninety percent of the time it pays off, and it's that ten percent that kills you. <laughs> that's that's what confessions. To be honest with you, to me has a lot of good things in it. It's, it's a story that I wrote <laughs> years ago, and I was going to do it myself. I said, you know what? I'm not going to take the bull by the horns. I'm going to get 50,000 bucks, go shoot it in uh, Tijuana, Mexico, and star in it. And, and I was literally going to, my, my whole goal for that one was to create a buzz. I was physically going to take three of my guys down there with me with a high camera or digital camera and stage real fights. So the, the key was what I was going to do, and I had everything planned, everything said, everybody told me, what are you, crazy? What are you, stupid? I go, no, 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 here's what we're going to do. I, I have two big guys who are really tough, 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 badass guys. And I was going to take them down there with me, and I was going to stage these real pit fights out there in alleyways and shit like that with real guys, real fights. And I said, the only caveat is that 15 seconds, no matter what, if I get my ass kicked, I kick, <laughs> kick his ass, I kick his ass. All I need is 15 seconds. I was going to start staging these fights and start putting them on the Internet to promote pit fighter, <laughs> like a personal pit fighter. Thank the Lord somebody came in and took it from me. <laughs> Thank God, because in retrospect, I'm thinking, what are you, crazy? But I was really going to do that. I was setting up Especially now that you let people know that you got a bad left leg. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now now they'll, they'll go for my left side. But I'm serious. I was going to do it that it was going to be a small film because it was basically, you know, it was based loosely on an experience between me and my brother who just um, has been in and out of prison for years and stuff like that and can never get his life together. And so that's what I infused. I infused a lot of the, the barrio, a lot of the, the the stuff that I grew up with, you know, into into that film. And that's that's why it was a very personal film for me. And uh, and it's still, I mean, it stands it stands out. It's not dated. And and what we did, we actually one night I took one of the biggest risks I've ever taken, <clears throat> is I had a bunch of homeboy friends of mine, and we uh, we actually went into the heart. I mean, I'm talking about one of the grittiest parts in East LA. And, and shot a big a big fight, and we had a lot of real real homeboys, and and so it just so happened that there was a truce going on, so so we had like four or five gangs there, low rider gangs, homeboys, all kinds of people just represented as part of our audience watching these fights, and um, and you know people you know tend to drink a little, smoke a little pot, and I didn't mind as long as they're having a good time, as long as nobody's killing each other, I'm a happy camper, you know, and and it just so happened that by accident one of the bikers revving his, his bike up. Oh. In one of the low rider cars. And oh my and for like thirty seconds, all of a sudden you see guns come out, you see crowds, I'm thinking, Oh my god, this is it. <laughs> Just keep the camera rolling. And 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 literally for you know, I it, it literally could have broken out it could have broken the truce basically. <laughs> Art Camacho was gonna be responsible for breaking this truce in East LA. And uh, and then I had my boy uh, Aldo Gonzalez who who really pulled it all together for me. He went in there, kind of calmed him down. Then I went in there and I said, you know, guys, I'm you know I'll pay whatever. I mean, I'm responsible. You guys were trying to do something righteous here, and and in a couple of minutes, everything just kind of you know went calm and uh, we continued having a great night. But I mean, this place was so bad that I remember there was cops driving by, but they drive by like two three blocks down the way. You'd see them, but nobody would come by. Nobody. I mean, no cops, no nothing, man. When they saw these gangbangers there, and, and you know nobody would come by, so so if anything happened, that would, that would have been the end of Art Camacho, <laughs> exactly. and exactly. and confessions of a pit fighter would have been locked door, away yeah. forever. Exactly, <laughs> you know. But um, but yeah, that's what happened. A lot of technical problems, but it's one of. I'll be honest with you. I mean, in the end, I mean, there's some some scenes that are really strong in there. I mean, I you know, I really put my all into it because I wrote, you know, I co-wrote the script and I wrote the story, I co-produced the film and uh, and again, right now, last I heard is everything technically has been taken care of and, you know, bingo, we're hopefully God willing by the end of this year will be, because it, it was at AFM last year and, and there was such a good response for it, you know, because we did, and as a matter of fact, what I did different in that one that I've done in any of the film is I had a uh, <clears throat> music uh, video editor edit the movie. I said, you know what? Give it, give it your taste. Give it your, give it your flavor. Let me show me, show me something different. I'm always wanting to learn, and uh, and we did. We gave it that guy Richie kind of feel to some of the scenes, man. It really. Scary. I'm gonna put you on the spot here. Since Jesse Johnson's Pit Fighter has already been out there, uh, I would think that they're gonna have to change the Confessions of a Pit Fighter title, whoever the distributor is. What's your idea for the retitle? I'm not sure. 
I never even gave it any thought. I, you know, uh, something to do with with uh, fighting, something to do with East LA, something to do with, uh, you know, with redemption. Because that's basically what it, what it's all about. And and like Jesse Johnson's Pit Fighter was kind of a throwback to the early '90s films that we were doing. You know, his his was um, was that kind of thing. It was like, you know, I thought it was I thought it was it was well done, and obviously it did phenomenal numbers. Phenomenal numbers. And that's why these guys wanted the Confessions of Pit Fighter because I had so many titles for it. And when they, <clears throat> when I came up with this one, that's why I wanted to make it more, you know, different. Uh, you know, it's still pit fighting or whatever you want to call that stuff. But, um, but no, man. I think, uh, you know, God willing, God willing, I think it, I think it's going to do well. It, it has so many good elements and it's so different than 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 the other pit fighters. The only, the, you know, resemblance is the, these guys are fighting and there's pit fighter in the title. <laughs> You know, but I really used a lot of homeboys and went to East LA and tried to get the flavor. You know. Uh, and on the subject of uh, fighting, you are in was it Missouri right now, prepping to do second unit work on a film about MMA, or am I wrong? Yeah, actually, no, I'm gonna go, actually, it was postponed. Yeah, no, uh-huh. I'm going to go. Actually, it was postponed. Um, but I'm going to. We're going to shoot it on the 26th of June. I'm going to be. Uh, I'm, I'm. You know, I was training the actor, and then the. Uh, the actor fell through, so they're getting another actor for me. So I'm going to train him and do all the, uh, the choreography and stuff like that. Uh, and MMA, and you know the challenge is the challenge in this one <laughs> is that the director wants to really get as real as possible. So that's very challenging because uh, you know if you if you if you're because uh, if you're a fan or if you've seen these fights, you generally cinematically they're boring. I mean, you sure you know you have a couple of spurts of guys beating the, the heck out of each other. But most of the time, when they're choking down and stuff like mm-hmm. that, it's not very cinematic. So, so the challenge for me is to keep it as real as possible with real techniques, but dramatizing it for the cinema, you know. And that's that's been it's really interesting. I'm very excited about it because you know most of the time it's pretty much it's carte blanche and let's create a fight for the sake of fighting. Well, like you know, like when we did the uh, all the gang fights in uh, in Half Past Dead too. Let's just go to town and let's just buy, just mess people up, you know, and then I'll capture it. You know, and this one is going to be, I'm really, you know, the, the attention to detail the director is giving it is really, really, really interesting. Very strong. I'm very, very excited, kind of rejuvenated because uh, I think the last film I choreographed was, um, or worked, <coughs> excuse me, worked on choreography was, was Half Past uh, Dead 2 or Half Past Dead 1 before that. I've been, you know, directing primarily the last several years. So this kind of, you know, gets me back into that kind of shape, you know, because I don't train as much as I like. I'm sure you can still kick my ass. <laughs> oh, are you kidding me, buddy? <laughs> I'm cinema, yes. I'm in the film, yes. <laughs> so I tell everybody, I'm, I'm in film I could beat the heck out of you in the street. Well, that's another story. You know, I tell you, the first time I started training, I started throwing punches again and kicks. My, my body was like, what are you doing? What <laughs> and you this? took quite the beating in Half Past Dead 2, and even in Half Past Dead 1, you got to be a character in those films. Let's hear about them. Yeah, you know, you know what's funny? In Half Past Dead 1, <clears throat> I had no intention. There was no discussion of me doing anything on and because I was happy that way. I just wanted to be behind the camera because it was my big first big studio film, and I thought, you know what, I just want to learn. I want to see, I want to contribute as much as I can, <clears throat> but, I, but I want to, you know, focus on the film. And then it just so happened that the stunt guy they had in mind, or the person they had in mind, ended up uh, getting his nose busted, or his whole jaw, or his face busted, whatever, unfortunately, in, a, in, a preview, in another film. And so they pulled me in at the last minute, and so, so I ended up playing this, this character, 49 or 11, I think it was. And uh, and in half past it too, it was a thing where Andrew really really got me into. He says, you know what, Art, we, we you know I've been looking at the script. We need a fight because it was going to be just a shootout between two guards and and and, uh, and Bill uh, Goldberg, and we need a fight. We need something. And I'm thinking, you know, Andrew, be real. I'm I'm you know 165 pounds at my heaviest and five uh, eight. <laughs> Goldberg is Goldberg. How realistic is that? And he goes, no, you can do it. And, and that's when I came up with the concept of, you know, these, these guards have, have batons. So that, that would be the equalizer. And, and I'm pretty experienced at, at you know, at screaming and stuff like that. 